I'm definitely having one of those days where every single makeup choice that I made today was the wrong choice. Every single one. And I'm not even kidding. <laughs> My skin looked good underneath all this makeup and then I decided to play around with some things that I don't usually play around with or haven't played around with before. Bad idea. Bad idea on filming days. And I'm sure you guys probably can't even tell, but um, I used the Antonym Noir pencil to do this smoky eye thing that I like to do sometimes. Don't, don't use it to smudge. It's not a good smudgy, it's not, at least not for what I want, it's not a good smudgy eyeliner. The only eyeliner I've ever been able to use that with is the, min the, the Mineral Fusion one. That one transfers a lot, but it, I like the way it smudges. I did not like this one. I put mascara on my bottom lashes, which I never do. I used a concealer as foundation that I don't like and it creases in my forehead lines. Every choice, every choice I made today was wrong and I can't do anything about it. I mean, I could not film a video, but I mean, I'm not gonna have time tomorrow. So yeah, this is what we're working with today. So last week, last Wednesday, I posted my most overhyped Green Beauty Brands video. And oh my God, <laughs> I was not expecting the response I got on that video. Like that is my most viewed and liked video in a really, really long time. So thank you guys for interacting and engaging and liking that video because it shows me the kind of stuff that you guys want to see. My other videos don't do so well. You guys like the controversial stuff, which you know what, maybe I'll just keep doing controversial stuff. If it, if it gets you guys to come out of the woodwork and like hang out on my channel sometimes, um, I'll do them. So that's sort of what we're going for today. We're doing another sort of might be construed as lightly, slightly controversial, <laughs> slightly controversial, we'll see. Um, but I, there were a couple of things that surprised me about like your reactions to that video. A lot of you guys came for me about RMS. You like don't get why I have like an issue with RMS, which is fine. I mean, everybody has their own prerogative of like brand standards and like brand behaviors and things like that. And I just find RMS too problematic for, to support. I just, I don't, like the way that they present themselves on social media. I don't like some of the things that people have said that they've said. I mean, obviously it's like hearsay, but I'm, I'm one of those people where if I hear about or experience or witness drama, I just immediately like write the brand off. Um, I don't want to talk about them anymore. I don't want to use their products anymore. Or like if I use their products, I don't talk about them because I do still have some RMS stuff that I'm using, but I don't talk about it really at all. There's some other brands whose products I'm still using that I won't talk about except like in an empties video or something like that. Um, but yeah, there are brands that I've sort of like, you know, written off because of behaviors, because of things that I've heard, because of things that I've witnessed. So that's just my prerogative. Um, I was surprised though that not as many people came for me for Mae Lindstrom and that's sort of why I feel like maybe it's okay if I do this video <laughs> because a lot of you guys did express that you were sort of burned by Mae Lindstrom as well. So, um, and it's, it's funny too, like I was expecting at least one comment where, you know, somebody was like, you're just salty that they don't, you know, send you PR or whatever. Like, no, I don't like Mae Lindstrom because I paid a lot of money and didn't like a single one of their products. <laughs> so I'm not salty. I'm salty that I, I, I wasted money. I'm not salty that they won't put me on PR. Like, I don't care. There's a lot of brands that I buy that don't send my PR. Like, I mean, I think that as a blogger, you should be buying and you should be spending your own money. If you're getting everything sent in PR, you're gonna be biased. Um, and there, but, but you guys know that even when I'm sent stuff in PR, I'm not biased. Like I, just because I'm getting something for free, like if, if I'm getting something for free and I don't like it, why would I continue wanting to get it for free? Like that, that just defeats the whole purpose. I mean, there are some people who are like that obviously because they're in it to like make money and you know, then they promote the newest and the greatest and like everything. Um, but for me, that's like not, that's not what I do. And I'm, I'm not gonna amass products that I don't like just so I could stay on a PR list. I mean, that makes no sense. Anyway, so you guys know that I'm, I'm only on PR lists for brands that I actually like, and I buy a lot of my own product. I buy a lot of stuff. Um, not this month, because I'm on a no-buy in October, but still, I buy a lot of stuff. So anyway, <laughs> um, now that we are six minutes into this video, actually, I think I spent about 60 seconds wondering what I was going to say in the beginning. So maybe we're five minutes into this video. What I wanted to do today is, um, because I got so burned by Mae Lindstrom, because I spent 
almost a thousand dollars on the entire line of May Lindstrom and hated every single product. Um, her line just did not work for me. I ended up throwing some stuff away. I ended up gifting some stuff to friends. I thought that what I would do today is give you guys a list of products that I like instead of the May Lindstrom products. So I hope it's not like a dupe necessarily. Like, I mean, I guess it kind of is. They're kind of like dupes for May Lindstrom, but in the, in the way that some people dupe where it's like a cheaper alternative, I'm just duping products that I didn't like from May Lindstrom that I get the same effect from that they claim. So like I went through their website and I looked through all their claims of their products. I looked through all the ingredients, everything like that. And I picked products that I use and love that work better for me that claim to do the same things that May Lindstrom's products say that they do or say that they should do, but didn't do for me. So does this make sense? So it's, I think maybe what I'll title this is like, products I liked better than May Lindstrom or something. So anyway, so because we have seven products to get through, let's get started. So yeah, I, I went through and I calculated out how much all the May Lindstrom products cost, how much all of my dupes or replacements or whatever you wanna call them cost. Um, so the May Lindstrom line, as it is right now, I'm, I am including the Honey Love, um, even though it's, or the Honey Mud, even though it's not for sale at the moment, um, it will be eventually. I mean, she's planning on bringing it back. She's been talking about bringing it back. Um, if you were to buy the entire May Lindstrom collection, not including, you know, their $90 gold spoon, which, <laughs> I mean, I want it, it's pretty, but $90, come on. Um, their bowl, their mask brush, um, I feel like they might have something else. I didn't include any of those things. For just the products, um, it costs $730 to buy the entire line of May Lindstrom. That's a lot of money. Um, okay, so then let's go through my May Lindstrom replacements. So let's start with, I guess, the Clint, like, I guess let's start with Honey Mud, since you can't buy that one anyway. Um, at least at the moment. So May, the Honey Mud. So the Honey Mud um, claims to be a gentle enzyme cleanse and mask, um, balances and comforts uh, stressed skin. So it's meant to be like a lightly exfoliating cleanser that you can also use as a mask. Um, that is the one product from May Lindstrom that I did end up finishing the entire jar of. I didn't enjoy it though. I used it because I didn't want it to go bad and because I really felt like at the age of it, I couldn't give it to someone else, you know, before it went bad and let them have time to use it or whatever. Um, so I did, that is the one product I did end up finishing up. I think it's because it's easy to use up products like those. I mean, you just put it on before you get in the shower, you put it on as a quick mask, you you know, after you wash your face, you use it to cleanse, a second cleanse or whatever. Those, those, are, those are kinds of products that are like easy to use up. So my replacement that I like better and has worked better for my skin is the Kokan Cleansing Cream by Namari. So this is like a cleansing cream. It doesn't claim to be enzymatic, but it, it has the same benefits and just sort of like properties that the um, Honey Love does. So it's a cleansing cream that emulsifies with water. You can use it as a light cleanser. You can use it as a mask. Um, so it's like, it's it's a cleansing cream concentrate and mask, which is essentially what the Honey Love is, or Honey Mud. I keep on calling it Honey Love. It's Honey Mud. Honey Love is uh, Leilani. <laughs> um, so the ingredients on these are very, very different. The Honey Mud is uh, honey-based, honey and bee pollen. It's got white kaolin clay macadamia nut, uh, witch hazel, colloidal silver, cocoa, sweet orange, ylang ylang, vanilla, cedarwood, frankincense, and myrrh. And what I noticed when going through all of the May Lindstrom ingredient lists is that she likes to use the same ingredients in all of her products. I think that's, that's probably a common theme through a lot of brands, but when I was like going through the list, it's sort of hard to determine like how she bases her pricing just based on the ingredient lists. I don't know, I, I just, I feel like her products are very overpriced and overhyped, hence this video. Um, so this, the Kokan, so the Honey Mud is actually $90, and the, the Namari Kokan is 66. So this one is based, it's vegan, so this one is a vegan version, so if you are looking for something like the Honey Love, or Honey Mud, I'm sorry, it's the Honey Mud. If you are looking for something like that and you want a vegan version of it, this is, I think, the closest you're gonna get to anything kind of like that. There is the Precious Skin Elixirs, Elixirs, um, Sterling, Sterling Polish, Sterling Honey Polish or whatever, but that one also contains honey. So this is a vegan version of that. It's got cashew, argan, hazelnut, peru balsam, um, cocoa, cocoa, frankincense, sandalwood, vanilla, turmeric, calendula, sweet orange, and lavender. So they have, actually, they have similar ingredients, you know, cocoa, 
cocoa, sweet orange, um, frankincense is in a lot of the Namari products as well, um, vanilla. So they're very similar products. And I know when I did my Namari review, there are a lot of people who were like, well, Namari is just like a ripoff of May Lindstrom. I don't think so. Um, I mean, <laughs> That you could say that about a lot of brands because a lot of brands have the same kind of products. You know, they've got a beauty bomb, they've got a cleanser, they've got a mist, they've got a whatever, they've got a cleansing grains. You could say that about any brand. I think that the only reason people sort of like think Namari is copying like May Lindstrom is the packaging because it's black with gold lettering. And that's, that's really where the similarities like stop. I mean, yes, they have similar kinds of products, but the ingredients um, are, for the most part, very, very different. So I don't, when I saw Namari, I didn't immediately think, oh, May Lindstrom. But I also didn't really like May Lindstrom, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't hold May Lindstrom on this pedestal that I think so many people hold May Lindstrom onto. I'm just like, no, May Lindstrom, you're not that good. <laughs> But yes, I like, I prefer the Cocon. This, you know, does the same thing for me that the, um, the Honey Mud did. I thought when I was putting the Honey Mud on my face, I just felt like I was wasting money because I was like, this is doing nothing for my skin. I don't really feel like this is making, this is, the experience isn't worth this. When I use the Cocon, like the scent, the experience of it, my skin just feels like super soft. It feels just like beautiful and like cleansed and like comforted. When I when I use the Namari products, like that's like a, a feeling that I get when I use them. It's just like comforting. When I used my Lindstrom, I just felt bitter. <laughs> All right, so another cleansing product is the Clean Dirt from May Lindstrom. So their claim is that it refines skin, it's, it uh, promotes a radiant complexion, exfoliates, um, eases congestion, brightens and tones, and fades discoloration. So um, I my replacement for this one is the Namari Staub, and I know another Namari product, but um, I feel like this is the best cleansing grain product that I've used that works similarly to how the clean dirt is described and how the clean dirt is used. So the Staub boosts circulation, draws out impurities, revitalizes, um, refreshes the complexion, leaves a rosy complexion. I love Staub. I am nearly out of my very first bottle of this, the first one that she sent to me. Oh my God, I love it so much. It lives in my shower. I use it like five times a week. Basically, anytime I get into the shower, I'm using Staub. I love Staub. My skin just like, it feels soft and amazing after I use it. My skin is like brightened. It's extremely exfoliated. It just, it works so well. I like to mix it with an enzyme cleanser actually. So it's like double exfoliation. This has enzymes in it, but this like double exfoliates. So they have, they're both like a, a dirt. They're like a cleansing dirt that you mix with water, mix with a cleansing uh, milk of some kind or mix with some other kind of medium to like make a cleanser out of it. You don't just rub it on your face dry. I prefer this one. The clean dirt, when I used that one, I felt like I was rubbing sand on my face. I don't know if, I don't, I don't, I mean, it's been so long since I've used it. What did I do with the clean dirt? Did I sell that? I forgot about that one. I don't know if I sent that to somebody or sold it. I don't remember what I did with that. Um, but I, I, I never liked that one. It just felt like I was rubbing sand on my face. It didn't feel nicely exfoliated. It didn't feel like, like comforting, like how I was describing Kokan, it just didn't feel that way. So Clean Dirt is based in uh, Kaolin, it's got Razul, it's got red sea salt, vitamin C, baking soda, which a lot of people could have issues with. I have issues with baking soda on my body, on my face. I don't feel like I've had an issue, but it's, it's not a necessary ingredient. Um, marshmallow root, it's got pink rose, calendula, cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, turmeric, ginger, vanilla, um, cocoa, or cacao. So, I mean, it's got things that should be beneficial to my skin. I just, something about it, it just did not work for my skin. This Staub one is Razul, pink kale and clay. It's got pineapple, vitamin C, hibiscus, coconut milk, red raspberry, blueberry, sulfur, cinnamon, cocoa, chlorella, silver. So again, it's got some similar ingredients because they do sort of like the same thing. It's got the vitamin C, it's got the clays, but then the Staub sort of like amps it up like the, nourishing properties of it. So like the exfoliation and the nourishing properties of it with the fruit enzymes and with the coconut milk. And it just, there are no words. Staub or uh, Namari. 
Namari does sell many sizes of all of her products, and if you have not experienced them yet, you really, really need to. I love, I love Namari. So if, if I was gonna give you any products to buy from Namari, it would be Staub, is like my number one. Staub and Kokan are my number one and number two. I would throw Sorbet as number three, and then, um, you know, the Tao, the, um, the Elixir, and the Nectar she's got. But those are my two favorites from Namari for sure, and they're definite replacements for May Lindstrom that I just feel like do like much better things for my skin than May Lindstrom ever did. Okay, so then I guess we'll go with the mask. So the problem solver didn't solve any of my problems. <laughs> so the problem solver for May Lindstrom um, is a huge 250 ml. Like that's humongous for a powdered mask. That's probably the biggest powdered mask that I, I can think of. Odacite might be the same size. Actually, I'm not really sure. Odacite has the Synergy mask, which I also don't really like. Um, so the problem solver brightens, or it's supposed to, brighten, heal, um, inflammation and irritation, fades hyperpigmentation, stimulates collagen, treats and prevents breakout. So it's supposed to be like a magic problem solver, hence the name for your face. Um, I use that one many, many times did not solve a single problem. <laughs> it's supposed to heal your skin. You know, I felt it like it was, it got hot because of the ingredients in it. So it's got um, Fuller's Earth Clay, Razul Clay, Rock Cacao, Red Sea Salt, Vitamin C, Baking Soda, Bamboo Charcoal, Vanilla, Lavender, Marshmallow Root, Frankincense, um, Gatu Cola, Angelica Root, Cinnamon, Nutmeg, Clove, Turmeric, and Cayenne. So it's got like the Cayenne, the Clove, um, the Cinnamon are all very stimulating ingredients. Um, it has the baking soda too, which is another very, very stimulating ingredient. It, this, for someone who's got very sensitive skin, don't even touch this. Like, <laughs> it's, it'll be too much for your skin to handle, especially with the baking soda plus all those other like spices that are very, very stimulating. It's a lot for a person's skin. And I didn't really feel it, like it, like it felt sort of like warm, but it didn't feel like it was doing anything to my skin. And like when I would take it off, my skin didn't feel any better. It didn't heal any breakouts. Like. I just was very, very underwhelmed and um, bitter again, very bitter. Every time I used one of the Maylinstrom products, I just felt bitter. <laughs> so my replacement for the Maylinstrom problem solver that works better for me um, is the HS for Love Propolis. This is old packaging. She does have new packaging now and her new packaging is also bigger. This is 120 mils. The new, the new size of it is 150 mils. So it's actually an extra ounce. It's five ounces instead of four. So again, you're getting a really, really um, like large size and the propolis is very inexpensive. Um, so the clean dirt, uh, I'm sorry. So the problem solver is a hundred dollars and the HS for love propolis is only 58. You are getting a little bit less product, but, um, if you're someone who is more like budget conscious and you need something that's more affordable, um, yeah, the propolis one is going to be the best bet for you anyway. Um, so this brightens, evens complexion, also stimulates cell renewal, collagen production, all the same things the problem solver is supposed to do that this one actually does for me. So this one's got French green clay, kale and clay, camu camu, white turmeric, raw cacao, cinnamon, clove, red sea salt, um, orange peel, and frankincense. So again, it's got similar, it's got a few similar ingredients, but then it also has a lot less ingredients. So the vitamin C part of it is the camu camu, which is supposed to be more potent than vitamin C. It also has the um, cacao, it's got the salt in it, it's got clove, um, turmeric, so the ingredient list is also, it's pretty similar, but it's, you know, it's much more pared down. There aren't, you know, there's no baking soda in it. There's no cinnamon, there's no cayenne. So a lot of the stimulating ingredients are gone, but the clove and the salt are enough that my skin actually heals from it when I use this. So if I'm having a day where I have like, I have a really, really bad breakout um, and I want to heal my acne, I'm pulling this out. I'm using it at night. I'm putting on some like really regenerating skincare. I'm waking up and my, my acne is starting to heal. Problem solver didn't do that for me. So, H is for love propolis. If you haven't tried that one yet, give it a try. It's much more budget friendly. It is very, it's stimulating too because clove is a very stimulating ingredient, um, which is why I think you don't need all those other things like the cinnamon and the cayenne and the baking soda because clove on its own is really amazing for acne prone skin. There's a lot of products um, that I've used over the years that have had clove in it that have just been wonderful for my skin. Um, 
Earthwise Beauty used to have a mask that had clove in it that did wonders for my skin. I wish she would bring back her masks. I'm so sad that she got rid of her masks. Anyway, so next I guess we'll do mist. So the mist from um, May Lindstrom is the Jasmine Garden. So it's a calming and restorative sensory mist. Um, it's nutrient. It's a nutrient delivery system and penetration enhancer. Amplifies effectiveness. Um, supposed to soothe oily, acne-prone skin. Eliminates dullness and, hydra and dehydration. I've talked about before. Um, I don't know mists. Mists are more of just like a sensory experience for me, and they do. You know, they help. Pretty much every mist that I've ever used helps absorb, you know, product that you put, if you're putting like a serum or you're putting like an oil or something like that, it does help it absorb. Um, I guess you could, you could call them all, you know, penetration enhancers um, and amplifying effectiveness. There are a lot of products that work best when used with a mist, like the Joss Rosebrook Hydration Boost Concentrate you need to use with a mist, otherwise it doesn't work as well. Um, you know, some of the Natural Logic products um, work best on very, very damp skin. Um, so there are a lot of products that work best, you know, when your skin is damp, you know, like applying a balm, um, you want to have your skin damp before you do it, apply an oil. It does help, uh, it does help oils and sort of like more greasy products absorb better if they're put on damp skin. Do they do a lot of the other things that these things claim to do? Soothing, maybe. I mean, like it gives your skin like a cooling sensation, but like, is it going to heal your acne, a mist? No. Is it going to eliminate dullness and dehydration? Dehydration, yes, but dullness, I, I really, I've never used a mist that's brightening. Like if you're gonna use only a mist in your skincare routine, it's not gonna do anything. <laughs> you need all the other products that sink into your skin and that you put on in like much higher concentrations than a mist, to, you know, to get the effect that these mists are claiming. I, I have an issue with mist sometimes. Like, I, I don't, I don't get, I don't. There are some mists that I like better than others, and then there are other mists like the Jasmine Garden that I'm just like, why does this cost $70? I mean, I did try the De Mamiel, um, their mist, and that is beautiful, and that is also very expensive, so I don't know. I, it's, just like, it's just like a preference thing, you know? And there are mists that I think do the same thing that the Jasmine Garden does at a much lower price point, and you don't need all those like extra ingredients in them because are they really making that much of a difference? I don't know. I don't know. But then I could be saying that about a lot of other, you know, mists, like the Josh Rosebrook mist has like 8 million ingredients in it. You know, Tony has a nutrient mist that is, you know, it's got a lot of ingredients in it that I love. Um, you know, there are a lot of other companies that, the, the Five Yena mists, I mean, those are beautiful. I don't know, it's just something about May Lindstrom. I'm, I'm never gonna understand what it is about May Lindstrom that I just don't like. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe her ingredients just don't do, I don't know, her ingredients just don't do anything for me. Anyway, so if you want something that is a sensory experience that smells like jasmine, um, that I think works just as well as the Jasmine Garden and costs nearly half as much, is the Ranavat uh, Jasmine Hydrating Tonic. It's one ingredient. It is organic steam distilled jasmine petals. <laughs> the only thing about this I don't like is the mister on it, so I definitely would put um, a different, put this in a different mister. I don't like the atomizer. Um, but, the, but they claim this, you know, helps dry lackluster skin, moisturizes skin, soothes the appearance or smooths the appearance of fine lines, uneven skin tone. So again, this one claims to do a lot of things. Does it really? I don't know. It, it hydrates my skin. Maybe that's enough to do all those other things. It helps with dullness and dryness and smoothing fine lines and yada, 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 whatever. Um, yeah, I like this one better than the Jasmine Garden. It smells much more like this just smells like jasmine. This like this smells like you took a handful of jasmine flowers, crushed them in your hand, and rubbed them all over your face. It literally, it just smells like jasmine. The jasmine garden, I remember smelling a, a, like of other things. It didn't smell, I mean, because it's got the vanilla, it's got the, you know, Bulgarian rose in it, it's got the ylang ylang. Maybe that's why she calls it jasmine garden, because it's got a couple of other things. I don't know. I prefer... I mean, I prefer straight, like, distilled hydrosols sometimes. There are a lot of companies that I've used where you just use a rose hydrosol or a jas jasmine hydrosol or I feel like I've used a rosemary hydrosol before. There are a lot of companies that do that and they work just as well. Okay, moving on. We've got three more. So cleanser. This is the one product from May Lindstrom that I haven't tried because it came out after I bought the entire May Lindstrom line. So the Pendulum Potion. 
So this is a makeup remover. It's an oil cleanser. It doesn't emulsify. It's supposed to soften, clear complexion, and dullness. So I can't really speak to this one. Um, I can only talk about it based on like what the ingredients look like and if I really think that they look like anything special. I don't know. So there is tamanu oil in it, macadamia, camellia, avocado, olive, plum, uh, plum kernel, which I think is like the one ingredient that I like that she uses is the plum kernel. All the rest I feel like are just sort of like, I mean, they're not, I don't feel like they're anything special. Cocoa, sweet, something, sweet orange. <laughs> I can't even read my own handwriting. Myrrh, jasmine, ylang ylang, lemon, frankincense, um, balsam of Peru. So it's got, it's got like a citrus, citrus jasmine scent, at least based on the ingredients. Um, yeah, I mean, I prefer emulsifying cleansing oils these days, bombs, cleansing oils, whatever. There are like a very select few um, cleansing oils that don't emulsify that I, I'll even consider using anymore. And so if I was going to, if I like, I looked through my collection and I was like, okay, what do I have that claims to like soften, clear complexion, dullness, things like that. Basically what most oil cleansers are, is there like another, it's another sensory experience because they all do the same thing. They all cleanse your skin. You have to remove them all with a rag anyway. They're, you know, they're not going to emulsify cleanly. So you remove it with a rag, steam it off, and remove, remove it that way. So really what you're looking for is one that has a sensory experience that you like. So the one that I've got, which is available, I mean, my favorite oil cleansers are probably the, the old Naturalogic oil cleanser, which I wish she would bring back because I love it. Um, the Nini Organics um, Halo Cleansing Elixir, but that one I felt was, I didn't pick that one just because it's got a way different scent profile than I, I think this one is sort of like going for. Um, but the other one that I like is the Giver um, from Wabi Sabi Botanicals. So it's an ritual cleanser and makeup remover or makeup dissolver. So it does the same things. Um, this one, I, I feel like Wabi Sabi has just such unique ingredients that you don't find in a lot of other brands, which is also another reason why I, maybe I dislike the May Lindstrom line so much is because it just doesn't feel unique anymore. Maybe it was unique in the beginning. It just doesn't feel unique now based on the ingredients. So the, the giver has Sapote, um, Rosilla, Moringa, coffee, and cacao. So it smells like when you use it. To me, it smells like cherry. Or like marzipan. It smells like coffee. I mean, like it does. It smells like coffee. Something about it though, like when I'm using it, it smells like cherry, like coffee cherry. It's just sort of like gives that marzipan scent. I don't know. I really like this one. Again, it's another one that it's just... It's sort of, I think maybe that's all that it is. Maybe that's all that it is. It's like, it's a sensory thing. And like, I just didn't feel like that sensory thing for Mae Lindstrom that I think that she's going for. All right, so we've got two more products. So we've got the Youth Dew, which is um, her oil. It's formulated to clear skin, restore balance, plump, protect, hydrate. Um, it's for sensitive, mature, and acne prone skin. Again, I just don't feel like this formula is anything special. There is like, there's the one ingredient in it, which is the plum kernel that I think is um, sort of like more special. There's only a couple of brands that I've used that actually do plum kernel. I do believe Blue Alchemy also uses the plum kernel. I think there's another, there's another one that Beauty Hero sells or I mean, it's like, what is it? La, La Prunière or something also sells some, it's like a plum kernel oil. I like that ingredient. I think that's like the one special ingredient that she's got like in the rest of the line. Um, the, the one that I like better that is like formulated for sort of the same purpose is the Mahalo Vitality Elixir. This is meant to rejuvenate, clarify, balance, nourish for acne, um, prone skin, mature skin. I feel like the ingredients in this are just much more special and do a lot better for my skin than like what the May Lindstrom Youth do claims that it's supposed to do. Um, so this one has got chia, black cumin, axazanthin, turmeric, and immortel in it um, that doesn't, that the Youth do doesn't have. They do share a few similar ingredients. Um, tamanu, kokoi, carrot, sea buckthorn, geranium, coenzyme Q10, um, rose. So they do share some similar ingredients, but I feel like the ingredient difference 
um, that that's in the youth do versus this. It's just not, it's not special enough to do anything for my skin. Like again, it's got the plum kernel, but other than that, it's got avocado, meadow foam, olive, rosehip, jojoba, pomegranate, barrage, which I all think they're, they're all great oils. Rosehip especially is just one that I love, but the rest I just don't feel, they don't feel like, I don't know if you're going to spend $140 on a face oil, it better feel and like read like luxury. I don't really get luxury from like avocado and olive oil and rosehip oil. I just don't. This one I feel like is just more, this one is $110 versus $140. And this one has got ingredients in it that I feel are more, and not even just luxurious, but like potent and like do more for my skin. So again, like the chia, the black cumin, which is great for acne prone skin, axisanthin, which is great for brightening, turmeric, immortel, all great things for acne prone skin. I just don't feel like the youth do delivers on claiming that it's for acne prone skin. A formulated to clear skin? No, it just, it never did that. It didn't do that. Okay, so the last thing is the blue cocoon. I felt the most burned by the blue cocoon because I love blue tansy. Blue tansy is one of my favorite ingredients. It's one of my favorite scents. I just felt so deeply hurt <laughs> that the blue cocoon did nothing for my skin. So the blue cocoon is a beauty bomb concentrate, um, which I think we're seeing a lot of now are sort of like beauty bomb concentrates or like these pressed serums. Live Botanical has a blue tansy pressed serum. I do, I do want to say that um, the Vital Balm Cream from Josh Roseberg is sort of like a pressed, maybe not, maybe not. There's, there's other pressed serums though. So if you want a blue tansy pressed serum, that's not going to cost you $8 million. Um, the Live Botanical one is very, very good. But I was going for sort of like Beauty Balm. I just stayed in that sort of category and that's not, I, that's why I didn't take that one out here. But that one is great. It's a budget friendly one. Works better than Blue Cocoon. Just them. So Blue Cocoon um, is meant to be for troubled skin, sensitive skin, inflamed skin, damaged skin, acne prone and irritated skin, all of which I have. I have all these things. I have troubled skin. I mean, my skin's not so sensitive, but it can, it can get kind of sensitive. It's inflamed, it's damaged, it's irritated, it's acne prone, it's a hot mess. <laughs> Blue Cocoon, you do not you did not do anything for me. I mean, I know I've got friends that love it who their skin is like, you know, inflamed. I watched Marie's recent video where she put on a mask and like within 60 seconds, she had to take the mask off because it was like irritating her skin. And so she said she rubbed the, like the blue cocoon on it and was like, oh my God, my skin feels so much better. I'm like, I never felt that way. <laughs> it just never made me feel that way. It never like, it never made my skin feel like nourished and happy. Um, so yes. Instead of the blue cocoon, I love the Mahalo Rare Indigo, which calms inflammations, um, acne, eczema, rosacea, dermatitis. It's for all the same skin conditions. It's for irritated, damaged, acne prone, inflamed, just troubled skin. That's what it is meant for. Um, I love this so much better. This, I've been through at least two jars of it, I believe, is this my third jar or is this my second jar? I can't remember. I have used up a full jar of this before. I love Rare Indigo. I love, I love, 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 Rare Indigo. Um, okay, so Blue Cocoon is Camellia Seed Shea Butter, which Shea Butter can be a problem for some people. I'm actually surprised. I feel like I've heard Marie say Shea Butter is a problem, but she can use the Blue Cocoon unless I'm mistaken. I'm not, I don't remember. Some people have problems with shea butter though. It can be too heavy for their skin. It's also got cacao, marula, baobab. It's got the blue tansy, myrrh, lavender, frankincense, um, geranium, rose, vanilla, immortelle, and shisandra, which is an interesting ingredient. I don't think I've ever seen that in anything else, at least not that I can remember, but it's the very last ingredient. How much of it is in there? I don't know. Ba the blue tansy is actually pretty high on the list. It's the fifth ingredient, fifth ingredient. So the rare indigo has hemp, murumuru butter, babasu oil, marula oil, um, grape seed, thea seed, kukui, acai. Um, then it has a proprietary blend um, infusion of herbs that she puts in there. It's got the indigo, the yarrow, chamomile, immortelle, ylang ylang, bergamot, lavender, frankincense, rose, coenzyme Q10, carrot, um, vitamin C, vanilla, 
and orris, which is again another ingredient. Is orris in one of the sigil scents? I can't remember now. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. But yes, this one I feel I feel like the rare indigo has just much more skin soothing and like inflammation inflammation healing ingredients than the blue tan than the blue cocoon does. I mean the blue the blue cocoon has got blue tansy, but that's sort of where it stops. That's like the only I mean <laughs> I mean, I'm not a formulator. Immortelle, I mean, it's got Immortelle. There's, I mean, it, there's just not much troubled skin loving ingredients in here that like the Rare Indigo does. I mean, the Rare Indigo has got the chamomile, it's got the Immortelle, it's got the hemp, it's got the, um, it's just got the marula oil. I just feel like it, the, the, the composition of ingredients in the Rare Indigo just, it does better for my troubled skin than the Blue Cocoon did. So that makes up all seven of the current May Lindstrom products and which products I like better and which ones I've been using consistently for a long time. Like May, the, um, the Mahalo products I've been using for years. I've been using and loving and talking about Mahalo and raving about Mahalo for years and years and years now, since 2015. Four years, four and a half years actually, four and a half years, I have loved and supported Mahalo. I love, I love everything about Mahalo. The only Mahalo product that um, doesn't really do anything for me is the original balm, which is why I'm so glad that she formulated the Rare Indigo, just because it does, it, that one is amazing. It's amazing for my skin, but the, the original balm just, it doesn't really do anything. I sometimes use it on my body, but I don't, I don't really like to use that one on my face because I just feel like it's not, my skin's not benefiting, benefiting from it in any way. But I love the bean. I love the unveil. I love, I love the rare indigo. Those are my top three for Mahalo. If you're gonna, if you have acne prone skin, troubled skin, get the unveil, get the bean, get the rare indigo. But yeah, I hope that you guys um, liked this kind of style of video. I mean, I'm not gonna do this for like, a lot of brands. <laughs> I am I am sort of like working on like an RMS dupes video. Like that one is where I'm actually looking for dupes to the RMS products, like ones that have similar, you know, staying power or like similar coloring at least. Like the colors, like colored dupes for RMS because um like I was saying RMS is not a brand that I really want to um uh, support anymore, which I know that some of you guys like don't understand, but that's fine. We all, we all like different. If you want to use RMS, like I don't have any ill, ill feelings towards anyone who still uses and likes RMS. Like it's just, it's my personal preference. Um, just like there are other brands, um, it's my personal preference not to use them. And I do have quite a list of brands that I don't use and support. Um, if you, if you don't see it on my channel or hear, hear me ever talk about it, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of brands out there though. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, try all of them and then like sit here and say, if I don't talk about it, it's because I have a problem with it. No, I mean, like I can't say that for all brands, but there, there is quite a, there's a hefty list of brands that I am no longer support because of either bad behavior towards me, bad behavior towards somebody that I know, um, you know, bad behavior in public, bad behavior in private comments I don't agree with you know there's just there's there's quite a list <laughs> um but yeah I mean that's the only other video that I'd probably do where I'm like I guess shading a brand <laughs> if that's the terminology you want to use was this a shady brand to May Lindstrom I guess um but I'm not like like I was saying it's not about like they never sent me PR. It's like, that's not, it's just that the products didn't do anything for me. And like looking at the ingredient list, they have a lot of the same ingredients in like every single one of the products. Like she just uses, and, and like I said, again, I do think that's the same across like brands. I know Wabi Sabi uses the same ingredients in some of her products. You know, um, Mahalo uses a lot of the same ingredients in her products, but there, it's just like with those brands, it's different because those ingredients and the formulations of those are better suited to my skin than the ingredients and the formulations of the May Lindstrom products. So I don't know. I guess we'll see how this video, how well this video goes over. And maybe you've been looking into May Lindstrom, but maybe you have like been hesitant. You've got similar skin conditions to me and you want to try stuff that maybe is better suited to your skin. Like I'm sure there are people out there who have acne prone skin who May Lindstrom works just fine for, but not me. 
not me. So I'm feeling a little tired and kind of hungry and thirsty because I've now been talking for 45 minutes. <laughs> this will be a fun video to edit. Um, yeah, I will see you guys in my next one. Um, might have a favorites video on Friday. That sounded kind of interesting for this week, so we'll see. I will see you guys in my next one.